Hi, Jordan from Entech here. Today we're going to be walking you through the third-party OSC application, Touch OSC, and we'll be showing you how you can make a simple control panel for your Elm Pixel system. The goal here is to create a control panel that can be used by a non-technical end user to control your lighting setup. Specifically, we'll be adding the ability to switch between five different media sources, as well as providing a fader to change the intensity. To create our OSC layout, you'll need Touch OSC Editor, which is available from the Hexler website. We'll make sure we include a link in the description for you. Touch OSC Editor allows you to create and edit control surfaces on your computer and transfer them over to your tablet or phone. When you open the editor, you'll see a blank black box representing your device screen. We'll begin by naming the screen and selecting the screen size. Touch OSC Editor has multiple preset sizes applicable for Apple devices. For many smartphones, the iPhone 6 Plus is a close match. Alternatively, you can enter your own custom values to match the screen resolution of your device. Next, we'll need to add a fader to drop intensity in Elm. To do this, right-click anywhere on the black space of your layout. A drop-down list will appear with all of the elements you can add. In this case, we'll select a vertical fader, or Fader V. Now, you can position it where you want and scale it with resize markers on the corners and sides. You can also change the color and name of your element, allowing for quick and easy identification. Be sure to check the inverted button to ensure your fader moves in the expected direction. The layout builder always shows elements with a value of zero, so if the solid bar is at the top, it will need to be inverted. Once we're happy with the position of the fader on your screen, we can now configure the OSC command string. The Touch OSC editor will try and create a default string based on the item's name. You'll need to uncheck the default setting, which will allow us to enter our own command string. To find the command strings for each function, you could consult the Elm user manual or the convenient list in Elm under the OSC remote settings page. For intensity, you'll need to enter the string that we've made available on the screen now. Leave light and low values as they are. Please note that the OSC string is cap sensitive, and in this case, stage 01 refers to the name of the stage you want to control. Stage 01 is just the default stage name in Elm. Now that we've made our intensity fader, you can move on to making buttons to select the media you want to send. A push button is suitable for this. Select push button from the same menu you used for selecting your fader. We'll just right click anywhere on the screen. Now we'll resize it and move it to a suitable place on your control panel. As before, we need to set the OSC command for the new button. Enter the string that we've made available on the screen now, and then in the value boxes, we set them both to be the same. This button will be selecting media slot one, so we want to set both the high and low values to be one. If the low value is set to zero, it will act as a momentary switch, only activating the media when the button is held down. Next, we'll move on to the remaining four buttons. This can be done by repeating earlier steps. However, it's much faster to just copy the button you've made and paste it down elsewhere on the screen. This also makes sure that your buttons are the same size and shape. Any copy and pasted buttons then need their high and low value updated to select a new piece of media. So the buttons high and low values should be set to two. And for button three, the high and low values should be set to three. Next, we'll add some labels as a useful way to keep track of what each element does. These are created in the same way as all other elements. We'll right click on the black space and select from the drop down menu as needed. The text and size can also be edited from the side menu just like the other elements. Finally, tidy up your screen using align and distribute tools. These are great for giving your space a clean, user friendly look. You can access these by selecting multiple elements, just drag and draw over the targets and then you can right click an element. You can then select the desired tools from the drop down menu. Once you're happy with your layout, we can then save it and transfer it over to a phone or tablet. We'll show you how to import this directly from your computer a bit later on. You can now shift your attention to the Elm software to prepare it for receiving OSC commands. Open Elm and make sure your stage is using the same name that you have previously specified in your Touch OSC editor. Remember that it's case sensitive. We've just used the default stage name, so we'll hit OK. Then we'll navigate to the OSC remote settings. We'll go settings, remote, and then OSC. We'll simply turn the switch on to allow Elm to receive OSC commands. 
From here, you just need to note down the port that's being used. The default in Elm is 9001, but you can change it if desired. Feedback can be left off as it's not needed for this design. You'll also notice the aforementioned list of OSC command strings can be found here. So you don't need to go digging through the manual if you have Elm opened up in front of you. Lastly, make sure your media is in the same slots you've used in your Touch OSC layout buttons. We've used slots 1 to 5. That's it. Now Elm is ready to be able to receive OSC triggers from your phone or tablet. To connect your computer to your phone, we'll need to install and run Touch OSC Bridge. It is also available from the Hexler website, just have a look in the link down below. This plugin runs in the background and acts as a link between Elm and the Touch OSC mobile app. You'll also need to know the IP address of your computer for later steps. There are a number of ways to do this. Depending on how your pixels are being connected, you can access the IP address from Elm by going to your output settings and seeing the IP address of the adapter you're using to send your artnet. Another reliable way of getting the IP address of your computer is to open command prompt, which can be done by pressing start and typing command prompt. You may need to run this command prompt as an administrator. Alternatively, you can open the run command by pressing down on the Windows key and R at the same time and then typing CMD. Once the command prompt is open, simply type ipconfig forward slash all and press enter. Then scroll up till you see the adapter you're using and look for the IPv4 settings. Now we need to open and configure Touch OSC. Open the Touch OSC on your phone and tablet. When you first open Touch OSC, it'll open one of the many default loaded layouts. To change these settings, simply press the circle in the top right corner of the screen and go to Layout to select your own. Click on the OSC tab under Settings and from here, enter the proper details into the different fields. Some devices will be recognized instantly by the app and you can simply click on them for the app to auto-fill the necessary settings. If not, enter the details manually. Under the host menu, you'll find a space to populate the IP address of your computer which we have previously found through the command prompt or from Elm. The outgoing port needs to match the port that Elm is expecting to receive on, which as we saw before, is defaulted to 9001. For the port incoming setting, our control panel is not receiving any feedback, so this setting is irrelevant. Zero conf name. You can change this to give your device a unique name. Next, the Touch OSC Bridge settings need to be configured. Enter the IP address of the computer in Touch OSC Bridge. As with the OSC tab, this will auto-discover some computers, but if it doesn't, just enter the IP manually. Once those settings are configured, go back to your computer and the Touch OSC editor, click the sync button and wait for a pop-up to appear. Now that the editor is ready to synchronize, switch back to your device running Touch OSC. We'll enter the layout menu and select Add from editor. Enter the IP address of the computer running the editor and press download. You can then scroll down the list to find the layout you imported and select it by tapping on it so that it's checked. We'll head back out of the settings on your tablet or phone by using the back arrow and pressing done. You should then be able to see and use your layout. You can now freely move your fader, press the buttons and have Elm respond and reflect your changes on its live tab. You can also check if Elm was receiving OSC by looking to see if the box has gone green in the OSC remote tab. That's it for today's video. Like, share and subscribe if you found this video useful. Comment down below if you have some questions or you think there's something that we missed. Don't forget to check out our social media pages and stay tuned for more helpful and tech tips.